This is Ken Jobst with Inspirational Moments. Proverbs 18.21 says this, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. At 9.30 in the morning on July 2nd, 1881, at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station in Washington, D.C., the 20th President of the United States, James Garfield, was shot by a man who thought he'd been cheated out of a political appointment as the U.S. Ambassador to France. President Garfield would linger between life and death for 79 days before finally succumbing to his injury. Those 11 weeks offered the press and public opinion ample opportunity to weigh in regarding the man who would become the next president, Chester A. Arthur. During those weeks, the New York Times stated that Chet Arthur, this is a quote, Chet Arthur is the least appropriate person in the nation to become the next president of these United States. You see, Arthur had been the political beneficiary of what they called the spoils system, a corrupt system of cronyism that James Garfield actually had worked to reform. Now, here's Chester A. Arthur, who had come up in that corrupt system, now in the office of the president. Would he rise to the occasion? and preserve the integrity of the reforms that his predecessor, President Garfield, had initiated? Or would he revert to the graft and corruption of the old spoils system? Well, enter Julius Sand, a 31-year-old bedridden woman from Brooklyn. Never having been politically active before, she sent a series of letters of encouragement and support to the soon-to-be president. Here's a selection from her very first letter. Listen to this. Your kindest opponents will say, Arthur will try to do right, adding gloomily, he won't succeed though, making a man president cannot change him. But making a man president can change him. Great emergencies awaken generous traits which have laid dormant half a lifetime. If there is a spark of true nobility in you, now is the occasion to let it shine. Faith in your better nature forces me to write to you, but not to beg you to resign. Do what is more difficult and brave. Reform. It is not proof of highest goodness never to have done wrong, but it is proof of it sometimes in one's career to pause and ponder, to recognize the evil, to turn resolutely against it. Once in a while, there comes a crisis which renders miracles feasible. The great tidal wave of sorrow which has rolled over the country has swept you loose from your old moorings and set you on a mountaintop alone. Disappoint our fears. Force the nation to have faith in you. Show from the first that you have the purest of aims. That was Julia Sands' first letter to Chester A. Arthur. 31 more letters would follow. So you ask, how did he do? Did the presidency make a new man out of Chester A. Arthur? The answer is yes. Arthur continued the reforms that were started by his predecessor, and throughout his administration, he never backslid. To use a Christianese term, 
Chester A. Arthur repented. Now, you may have never heard of Chester A. Arthur. He's on the list of the seven least remembered presidents. But maybe at least he never became the wrong kind of famous. And perhaps we have Julia Sand to thank for that. Chester and Julia never did meet face to face. When he left office, Chester Arthur ordered that all of his official papers be burned. Presidential libraries would only become fashionable many, many, many years later. The only correspondence that Arthur kept was the 32 letters sent to him by Julius Sand. Chester A. Arthur died at age 57, one year after leaving the office of the presidency. Julius Sand died in 1933, outliving President Arthur by about 50 years. Now, if you ever doubt the power of repentance, think of Chester Arthur. If you ever doubt the power of encouragement, think of Julius Sand. With Ken Jobst, this is Inspirational Moments. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.